Thank you very much, Talina, for that introduction. So I will be presenting today an interim analysis of our results of a paediatric cohort taking the shorter multi-drug resistant tuberculosis regimen um, from our project in Karakal, Pakistan, Uzbekistan. It's the same area that some of the earlier talks, or one talk, um, was given with an adult cohort, and this is the paediatric part of the same study. So for some context, Karakal, Pakistan is an area in the far west of Uzbekistan. It's a very large area, um, and as you can see here, it's this entire section of western Uzbekistan. It has a population of approximately 1.7 million people, and as was previously discussed earlier today, high rates of drug resistance, with 23% of new cases of tuberculosis having uh, multi-drug resistance, and 62% of retreatment cases. MSF has worked in conjunction with the Ministry of Health in Karakal, Pakistan and Uzbekistan since 2006 in the area of multi-drug resistant tuberculosis. The WHO estimates that 30,000 children will develop multi-drug resistant TB each year. This is a population that has been neglected in research with very little information available about children with multidrug resistant tuberculosis and even less information available on treatment regimens and this will be the first detailed description of children taking the shorter multidrug resistant tuberculosis regimen. Children seem to be good candidates for shorter treatment regimens because they tend to present with porcy bacillary disease, so with less bacterial load, and logically should respond quickly to treatment and be able to have good outcomes with a shorter treatment regimen. Also, as we heard early today, that multidrug resistant TB has significant psychosocial impacts for all people with multidrug resistant TB, and it's particularly prevalent in young people, adolescents, and children. In our area, a diagnosis of multidrug resistant TB results in compulsory exclusion from school and other activities, which not only has academic implications, but also has implications for their social well-being and their connectedness with their peers. The WHO conditionally recommended the shorter multidrug resistant tuberculosis regimen for children last year in their update, but as I said, there isn't a lot of information available to back that up. So it's a conditional recommendation in the context of not very much data being available for this particular population. We've recruited children since 2013. Into, we have ongoing recruitment at the moment. We will finish recruitment in June of this year. It's a prospective single arm cohort study and it's been conducted collaboratively between the Ministry of Health and with MSF in Karakal, Pakistan. We have ethics for approval from both Ministry of Health and also from the MSF ethics review boards. We include all children, so that is people under 18 years of age within the area who have microbiologically confirmed rifampicin resistant tuberculosis or if they're less than 14 years old, we include children who have a clinical syndrome con consistent with tuberculosis and a contact with confirmed rifampicin resistant tuberculosis. That's in part due to the difficulty in obtaining specimens for younger children, and it's difficult to establish their exact resistance profile. We exclude children with ofloxacin resistance because as I will explain, fluoroquinolones are really the backbone of this regimen. Um, and also we exclude children with a second line drug use for more than one month before starting the regimen. With the exception of lymph node disease and pleural disease, we exclude all other cases of extra pulmonary disease. So it's only for children with pleural, lymph node or pulmonary tuberculosis and those who have contraindications to the study drugs that we use. There are two phases, as was briefly outlined earlier this morning, of the short course regimen, and that is an intensive phase which lasts between four to six months. The duration of that intensive phase is dependent on the timing of culture conversion. The later the culture conversion, the longer the intensive phase. For the intensive phase, we give the children one of the two available injectable agents, that is capriamycin or canamycin, high-dose isoniazid, moxifloxacin, prothionamide, clofazamine, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol, and they take the drug seven days a week under a directly observed therapy regimen. The continuation phase is fixed at five months, and we stop the injectable agent and the high-dose isoniazid and continue the remaining five drugs for those five months. Again, seven days a week, directly observed therapy. 
The monitoring that we perform is weekly MSF nurse review and monthly MSF doctor review, and that's in addition to their routine Ministry of Health reviews. Um, we also perform monthly smear and cultures. And in terms of monitoring for side effects, we perform routine ECGs, audiometry, visual assessments, biochemistry and liver function tests, and TSH. The children will be reviewed at six months post-completion and also 12 months post-completion, but as you'll see, we're relatively early in the data collection stage, so very few of the children have got to that stage as yet. At the time the abstract was presented, we had screened 32 children. We had excluded 10, enrolled 22, and withdrawn three subsequently. We had 12 children on treatment, and we had seven outcomes. I'll go through those outcomes shortly and also a brief update on some extra outcomes that we've had since the submission of the abstract. Our children are old children, as in they're teenagers. So the average age you can see is almost 16 years of age. We have one very young baby at eight months and the rest of them are mostly teenagers. And that's in part, as I said before, because of difficulty in obtaining specimens from young children and also difficulty, therefore, in obtaining a drug resistance profile from that child. We have 59% female, 74% are culture positive, um, and you can see the denominator there is 19 because at the time of reporting there were still three cultures pending. 91% have only pulmonary TB, and again 91% have microbiological confirmation. The outcomes we had at the time of the submission of the abstract were seven with one death, one failure, one treatment complete, sorry, five treatment complete, and 12 continuing on treatment. We have now two further outcomes for a total of nine outcomes, and those two extra outcomes are both outcomes of cure. So at the moment of our nine outcomes, we have seven successful outcomes and two unsuccessful outcomes, which is encouraging despite the fact that one of those outcomes is unfortunately a death. Adverse events are common as with any multi-drug resistant tuberculosis regimen. 60% almost of our children experience side effects. The vast majority of those are grade one and two side effects. And of those, again, the vast majority are nausea and vomiting. We've had two serious adverse events. That is grade three or four in the Dade scale. One is the previously mentioned death which is a death that's presumed due to hepatotoxicity from drug toxicity. Unfortunately, at this time, the results of her autopsy are still pending, so we're waiting for full information about the circumstances surrounding that death. And the other was a case of significant QT prolongation, and that was in the context of an intercurrent illness. That child had appendicitis, and it resolved with the resolution of that intercurrent illness. That is the only case that we've had where study drugs have had to be temporarily stopped because of side effects. There are some limitations to our study. As I said, older children are overrepresented, and that's because of difficulty enrolling younger children on an empiric basis based on their contact drug resistance profile. Um, and again, most of them are culture positive for the same reason. Again, also, we're early in our study time, so we don't have all the information at hand as yet, but the early results are encouraging for using the short course regimen in children or at least in adolescents. We found that in general, treatment has been well tolerated despite our two severe adverse events. Um, and recruitment has been slow for the same reasons. The TB is neglected in children because it's really hard to diagnose. We're excited about the future of multidrug resistant for children. We're excited to see what the results of this study will be at the conclusion of the data collection period and if we can finally establish a little bit of information about the treatment of multidrug resistance in children and also whether we can use the shorter course regimen in a context with high second line drug resistance. It does have implications therefore outside of the ex-Soviet region where children who have presumed or proven fluoroquinolone sensitivity would be good candidates for the shorter course regimen. We're also looking to the future to find even more tolerable regimens for children and hopefully some that don't include injectable agents because certainly for children that adds an extra level of complexity to their psychosocial well-being. I'd like to thank the, everyone involved in our research for their help in getting us here and I would like to invite any questions if there are any. Thank you for sticking to time and I'm going to open the floor to questions. Quick couple of responses.
Hi, uh, you mentioned in adverse events hepatotoxicity and uh, in fact uh, the fatal outcome. In Indian setting we don't follow up the audiometry and visual analysis so much. So what is uh, your take in uh, respect to autotoxicity? So we haven't had any cases of severe autotoxicity as yet within the paediatric population. Um, obviously that has extra implications within children because especially for those who are pre-language development, causing hearing deficits has significant social impacts on their speech development. Um, so far we have not had any cases where there's been hearing impairments found. Um, we do monthly audiometry on the children routinely regardless of whether they have symptoms of hearing loss or not. Um, and so far it's all been okay. I know that in some of the adult populations described there have been significant events so we'll keep an eye out to see what happens through the rest of the study period. And, and what is the duration of uh, compulsory expulsion from school? Entire duration? No, so at the moment it's um, for the most part the duration of the intensive phase. So for right. these children being able to shorten the intensive phase from the conventional regimen of six or nine months down to the four months is a big benefit to them. Thank you. Yeah, someone just told me that the Supreme Court didn't even question the fact uh, that children with HIV should go to school and it's been incorporated in the right to education. But we're increasingly hearing about children who are being excluded from school because of TB. So I think it's, it's quite...